it does seem that in many cases, that familiarity really does bring an, a, an appreciation, even an affection for the process. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Chief Marketing Officer. Our goal is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. Andrew, I must admit that this episode that we're doing today brings me great joy as the chief marketing officer. Everything brings you great joy (laughs) as the chief marketing officer. Well, that's because I love working for IEW. I love working for you. So the reason, I just need to jump right in and say the reason why I'm excited about today's episode is we're going to provide, I think, some clarity to a product line of ours and maybe give some recommendations to people about where to start and where to continue. That's probably our most frequently asked question, where do I start? And I think that's because someone in this company long ago decided grade levels become irrelevant when you're teaching writing. So let's just start right there. I didn't decide that. (laughs) That was just a self-evident truth. (laughs) Okay, well, let's talk about that a minute. Why don't we have the grade three flavor, the grade four flavor, the grade five flavor products? Well, basically because it's fundamentally disordered and disordering to compare children simply based on age and assume that just because someone is a certain age, they should do a certain type of work or have a certain level of skill or general knowledge or whatever. And I've said many times that I approach the world through the eyes of a music teacher. Right. So, you know, for a music teacher, it doesn't matter when you start. You can start at four or eight or 12 or 14 or 40 or 86. It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. What matters is that you start. Yes. The second thing that doesn't matter is where you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it takes you six months or two years to get through book one. Mm -hmm. What matters is that you are continuously making progress and improving in relation to yourself. The third thing that doesn't matter is if you had two kids that even if they were exactly the same age and started playing on exactly the same day, you wouldn't compare them and say, well, you know, Johnny's in the third piece in book two, but Susie's still on the you know, next to last piece in book one, so Johnny's ahead. Mm-hmm. That That's just a nonsensical way of thinking. So, you know, a lot of what I'm doing with parents is trying to help them just dump that whole concept mm-hmm. of age-grade correspondence. Right. We do, however, talk about reading level. Yes. And that's how we group our materials. Yes. So upper elementary reading level, Mm -hmm. which would be, and and I would be as vague as possible, you know, grade three to five plus or minus. Right, right. And uh, that way, if you have an older student who has taken longer to get to independence or maybe not even quite fully independent with reading, you know, you can move to a appropriate reading level book. But nowhere in it does it say whatever grade it is because then an older kid would be, okay, I'm stupid because Mm -hmm. I have a book with a three on the cover, but I'm actually 11 years old or some crazy disconnect like that. So putting together all our materials, we're trying to encourage a broad way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And we teach the same thing to everybody regardless of age. I always say I teach the same thing to everyone, whether they're in second grade or graduate school. I don't presume anybody knows anything. Right. Much like if someone came for music lessons, I would pretty much start everyone at the beginning, mm-hmm. regardless of age and, you know, possibly even previous experience, depending. Right. So it's a system. We start at the beginning, we teach through, and what 
varies is the reading level of the source text, mm -hmm. the sophistication of the ideas for writing, yes, and then the speed of introducing the stylistic techniques yes, uh, with the checklist. So that's why we are intentionally not putting numbers on the covers of our books. Right. So we are specifically talking today about theme-based books and perhaps asking and answering some basic questions about are these history lessons, for example, in and of themselves, are they something that can replace? We're going to be talking about Wonders of Science, our newest theme-based book. And does that replace a science curriculum kind of idea? So we're going to talk about that. But I also want to just mention that one of the things that we like to recommend to families and teachers that are brand new to IEW is start with the teaching, writing, structure, and style. Start with the teaching, writing, structure, and style because you're learning a different way to teach writing. And it's easier for you to quote, dump it on your kids if you've self-afflicted yourself with the instruction well, as well. Well, no, it's easier to avoid dumping yes. it on your kids if you have learned the system. So, you know, people, um, this conversation happens thousands of times, sure. maybe in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the most frequent conversation at a convention. People say, well, how do I get started with this? And right. so I point out our main thing is that we teach you, the yep. adult, yep. how to teach the structure and style system to students of any age and aptitude. Right. And that is the TWSS, and that's always where I point people. Yep. And I say, we will teach you this system. There are exercises that you will do, the practicums, you know, write some writing, making outlines, mm -hmm. and doing some writing yourself. And once you learn it, then you have options. Option one. Design your own assignments for students. Right. That's what we taught you to do. Mm -hmm. And the upside of designing your own assignments for students is you can use whatever materials you wish. You can pull source texts out of textbooks. If mm -hmm. you have them handy, you can pull source texts off the internet. You can connect those source texts with whatever you're reading or talking about in history or science or current events or whatever you like. I suppose you could write your own source texts if you wanted to, <laughs> but you know you have total freedom to connect those source texts with what you're reading and talking about or what the student is drawn to interest-wise. Mm -hmm. That's the first option. The upside is you can connect it really well with what you're doing. The downside is you've got to do the lesson planning. Yes. And once upon a time, that was all we had That's right. was the TWSS, and you would learn that, and you would go figure out all your lessons. And then people seem to need help with that. Well, and you did little demonstration lessons at the end of the teaching, writing, structure, and style. So you started showing teachers how to teach students how to use this method and kind of dish it out to them in a gentle way. Right. And those are still there. And mm -hmm. it shows what do you do with unit one and two with little kids and right. medium kids and older kids. But and people those are great really, lessons. But people really liked that video, Andrew, and yeah, they yeah. wanted you to do more of that. So we have more. Yeah. So and then, that's the, the other option. you know, I say those are, that's the upside, the downside. The other option is to use the theme-based books. Mm -hmm. And the upside of that is that you don't have to figure out what to do Monday morning. Right. And so you have then uh, choices, and you can get ancient history, medieval history, U.S. history, Narnia. Now we have science. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few others that are in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is very helpful. Right. But I don't recommend that people try to use the theme-based books without learning our system first. Exactly. Especially if you're the main teacher. Now, you know, some parents are in co-ops or programs or various communities where a different teacher or tutor is doing the direct instruction. Mm -hmm. But I will say, in those circumstances, we get the best results mm -hmm. when the parents watch the teacher training course as well. Right. Yep. Because then they really understand why that teacher, that tutor is saying what they're saying and doing what they're doing and why mm -hmm. the homework is the way it is and why the books are the way they are. And so, you know, you do it. And it's it's an investment 
for your life. It, right. You know, you're going to invest a little bit of money and a little bit of time in the big picture. It's a small investment for the huge benefits you gain by doing the teaching writing instruction style course yourself as an adult, especially if you're going to move into the theme-based writing lesson books. Yep. Then you you continue the conversation at these conferences and say, now there's some people who they really prefer to be able to just let their kids watch a video. They don't have to do any of the heavy lifting. And so we have the Structure and Style for Students series with uh, six, soon to be seven years. It's true. Of video sequence. Mm -hmm. And some people like that. And some kids do really well with the video. They connect with the kids on the video. They like the jokes. They enjoy the source text. They're all kind of loosely thematically connected. So the upside of that is you don't have to figure out what to do at all. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, you could just start that without the TWSS. I mean, mm -hmm. we always recommend that parents yes. do get the teacher training course. The downside is, honestly, the content is somewhat random. Mm -hmm. It's just what, you know, our team thought would be fun and interesting. And but I think it's pretty fun and interesting, Andrew. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so. But it's not as directly connected mm -hmm. with, say, the, the content for the year. Sure. You know, so a lot of people are in a, a cycle where they may be mm -hmm. doing ancient history this year. So right. they're reading books and having conversations and watching little videos and studying other stuff that's all connected. Right. So it's integrated. Right. So that's where I think our theme-based books are the strongest for groups and co-ops, as well as people who want to more directly connect content with other subjects. Yes. And I will just, you know, add the idea of these theme-based books, and I kind of alluded to this, are not intended to replace a history curriculum, right. no, a science curriculum, because you're just writing about, you know, a couple handsful of different topics, and it's not replacing the the swath of life science, of earth science, yeah. of ancient history. You're going to write in our ancient history book about something that you might have read about you might have gone. You might go a lot deeper because when you write about something, you can go a lot deeper, or you just learn it. You learn it better, and it mm -hmm. reinforces. But um, again, there's no claim that we're producing history or science curriculum exactly. per se. And if right. you want a science curriculum for elementary age students, then yes. you should go find one. Mm -hmm. And if you want to loosely connect writing mm -hmm. with I suppose mostly life science, but it's it's it, pretty broad. It's a isn't smattering it? of both. And you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, just write your own source text. And as I'm looking through Wonders of Science and the table of contents, I I must confess, Andrew, that the unit sixes in particular appeal to me. Yeah, well, you wrote <laughs> did, them. I did so. write them. Well, let me just say this. I wrestled with the content. So I can tell you all kinds of wonderful things about Einstein, about Tesla, and about the Sun Queen. Marie which, Douglas? Yeah, right, right. Which many people don't even know about her, but she basically was the founder of solar energy and I have solar panels on my roof right now, thanks in part to this amazing woman. And I got to learn more about this. But, you know, writing source text for this is a level A book. So the reading level is grades three to five. This is a higher level, level A. So maybe a little bit on the older side. We go through all nine units in the Wonders of Science book. Oh, okay. And so it is going to be what we call an A plus book. So a a level B student, which would be someone who's reading at a sixth to eighth grade level, could comfortably use it. Actually, anybody could use it who's anybody could use it, yeah. interested in science. But this idea of making the stories, not just the stories, but the the source text, the almost like encyclopedias articles contain enough facts for the students to be able to complete the assignment successfully, to complete the task of a unit six, but also not to be bored because we try to make it interesting as we're, you know, taking the students through the lessons because we want them to enjoy the writing assignment. 
We do have a page, I'm looking at our Magalog right here, and it talks a little bit about the theme-based books. And we have right now about 15 theme-based books. And, you know, we are very intentional about what we're adding to our repertoire. And, you know, we've got a few more in the works. But I want to let you know that this chart on page 12 in our Magalog link in the show notes, kind of shares the progression if you wanted to start super easy with someone who is either special needs or maybe just barely starting to write. They're reading a little bit, but they're not, you know, we've got books for that level. We've got books all the way up until probably our highest level book, which is the classical rhetoric book. That's probably about a junior in high school level in in terms of as you say, the ideas and then the reading level. Yeah, actually, that book could easily be a university-level yeah. course at <laughs> yes. this point. But there's not much difference between high school and university-level courses in many cases. So. Yes. And people can, you know, basically jump in. You don't have to do one theme base before Mm-mm. doing a different one. So all of them start at Unit 1. Yep. All of them start presuming no previous experience with dress-ups. Yep openers, whatever the style, and then you go through the units, and uh, next year, choose a different one, Right. shift over to video, shift back yep. to theme-based, make up your own lessons, go through all nine units again, yep. come back, go through all nine units again. And, you know, I always say, if you've got a student who would go through all nine units and the stylistic progression, kind of each year is going to be a little faster, a little easier, a little more familiar, a little more mastery, a little mm-hmm. more skill in doing it. You're going to come out with a student who knows it well enough to probably teach people how to do it. Yep. They're going to take that off into wherever they go after that. Yep. And how many hundreds, if not thousands of emails, letters we've got of people saying, you know, I did this for this many years, and my son, my daughter, went off to college, got A's on every paper, professors saying, where did you learn to do this? Right. And, you know, that's just like normal for us now. Right. It's like right. we just live in a world of continuous miracles. <laughs> it's true. And I just want to kind of reiterate what you said about, yes, we start at Unit 1 every year. If you've been doing this for a couple years and you open up a theme-based book and it starts at unit one, the temptation would be to groan and say, oh, my kids already know this. I'm just going to skip it. But that whole idea of laying the foundation again and building on something and giving the students confidence first, then that builds their competence. So we want them to know, oh, I get this. I know how to do this. Whip through it. Absolutely. Work through it a little bit more quickly. Don't skip the units, but maybe accelerate the- The style. The style. Yeah. Exactly. That's but a great you would, it. Well, you would not be surprised because you watched me be surprised at how much kids do actually lose yeah. between the end of a school year and the beginning of new classes. Yes. It's like, come on, guys. We, did we this. knew this. We knew that we knew this. Yeah. And they're just fuzzy. You can't yeah. blame them. Yeah. You know. So this um, cyclical review mm-hmm. is so effective. Right. And we know from all the research that the best way to learn things is spaced repetition. Yep. So, you know, you look at some writing programs and they might spend, say, a whole year, literally an entire year doing one type of writing. Mm -hmm. And then next year, the whole year, doing a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, the whole year, well, what what about that first year's kind? Yeah. Whereas we go through all nine units, and we have extensions off those for more advanced students. And yes, we, we even have geared the lessons so that as you go up in reading level or Mm -hmm. target, there's less in the early units, Mm -hmm. more in the later units, but we don't ever fail to revisit. And that creates the mastery approach, that that cyclical revisiting, spaced repetition, familiarity becomes mastery, mastery becomes, well, a lot. I mean, I'm not going to guarantee anyone comes to love it, but <laughs> it does seem that in many cases that familiarity really does bring an, 
an appreciation, even an affection for the process. Exactly. Yep. And I think also as students get older, they're able to retain it better. And the maturity then is going to allow them to bring it with them into life that we were talking about earlier. Here's a a little known fact that you may not even know this about me, Andrew Poudoir, but when I graduated high school, I went on to college and I had great ambitions to get a double major and a minor all at once oh, and get it all done in four super years. Hyper there, huh? Yeah, except that my GPA was 2.9. This is, I know, right? He's, you should see his face. He's shocked. He I can't am believe. shocked. Well, a double major was taking on a little bit more than I could actually do. And I also got involved in a wonderful sorority, which might have been a little distracting, which mm. also brought me some life skills. But you know what, Andrew? I was, I was pretty young. But here's that haunted me because when I applied to get an MBA after I was all done homeschooling, after I was, you know, had done a couple years of teaching, they were questioning whether or not I was capable of doing an MBA because, you know, my GPA in college, my undergrad was pretty low. Well, they let me in and I graduated with high honors, a lot due to the part, fact that a lot of the assignments were written and I knew how to write <laughs> because. I had been teaching writing to my yeah. students, to my own my own kids. And I think, you know, just being older and knowing, you oh, know, sure. what I could and couldn't do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if everyone would just live for several years and then go to college, right. they would probably do better. Well, that's a completely different episode. Yeah. We'll have or to talk they'd about be that sometime. smart enough to quit. I don't yeah. know. But, yeah. but the well, theme-based books, don't give up on them. Don't give no, up on the no. video course. Continue um, to. What's nice about the theme-based books is they do alternate mm -hmm. between the kind of fact-based report research essay assignments, which are you know in a way kind of easier to come up with because you're talking about history or science and you know, there's a lot of encyclopedic information available, but it also includes the narrative, the imaginative, the inventive side of writing. And so that, that I think, is one of the most significant things about all mm -hmm. our programs, yep. all our materials, is that we have both of those going through the school year. Right. And so kids get to go between. Okay, some kids prefer, just give me the facts. I'll give them back to you. I'll learn what I can, but don't stress me and having to think of anything. Right. Right. Other kids are the opposite. I hate having to be obedient to facts. Mm -hmm. I just want to... Imagine everything and put aliens in every story I write, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, we you have science, Wonders of Science in front of you. I want you to turn to page 140. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, Andrew, is describe the pictures to our listeners and so that we can see some of that creativity. So I, I don't want to go into explaining what a Unit 5 is. You'll get that if you go through our system. But I just want you to turn to page 140 and turn to and, and tell me what you see in those pictures. Because this is that creative thing. And I know, Andrew, you've said you don't like Unit 5. Sometimes it's a challenge for you to come up with what you're seeing in the pictures. But just describe the central fact of each of these three pictures. Wow. Well, it appears that there are two scientists in a lab of some sort with a beaker and some other device, maybe holding a test tube on a table. One of the scientists has a clipboard and the other scientist is apparently pouring something from the test tube into the beaker. Mm -hmm. The next picture is basically a cloud. It's just a cloud completely obscuring both scientists and part of the table. And in the third picture, one of the scientists is no longer there. <laughs> and the one holding the clipboard and the pen has dropped both and has hands on head in an expression which might be described as shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, this this is, you're not going to learn a whole lot of science from this particular lesson, but you have to imagine why the cloud and where did the missing scientist go? And obviously this could be death and destruction or time travel or shape-shifting or invisibility potion or murder. 
<laughs> uh, I mean, there's so many possibilities here. Well, you know, obviously, some I, students would lean toward the more violent, and others might lean toward the more romantic. I don't know how right? kids would do this. I've never taught the lesson. But one thing I know about lesson five is I don't have to figure out what they're going to think. So it's easy. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, the last picture with the scientist who is in shock. Clearly, this scientist was not expecting that result. So maybe what was this scientist actually expecting? Not that. <laughs> well, you know, possibly. I mean, that could be an expression of joy at success as oh, well. Okay, there you like go. Like she sufficiently manipulated all the circumstances <laughs> to get rid of this other one, whoever it is. Well, um, and, and, you know, it looks like maybe she dropped her pencil, but maybe actually that is a minuscule stick bug or something that she turned the scientist Well, and it into. doesn't even have to be a she. It could just be, you yeah. know, a guy with a longer hair that is not yeah. cut very stylishly. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a lot of options. Yeah, but I love that. I just, you know, I wanted you to describe that. I know that you had not seen this this particular picture before, but I wanted our listeners just to hear. <laughs> yeah, the, but you know what I think is worth doing is just um, looking at the table of contents okay. because— you know, I, I love the variety yep. that we fit into these books. So, yeah. go ahead. you know, unit one and two, dead ants, honeybees, bombardier beetles, and monarch migration. Mm. Right? I mean, that's that's got boy appeal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's got general appeal. I mean, honeybees are incredible. In fact, that's what we put on the cover of the book. We yep. have bees. Mm -hmm. Then unit three, now we're into stories. Well, what kind of stories connect with science? Okay, it's loose. Icarus, mm -hmm. right? Daedalus and Icarus, you know, all that flying too close to the sun mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Archimedes, this is pretty much the standard story that everybody is supposed to know. Mm -hmm. Jack and the Beanstalk, a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, Life beans, science, yeah. beans growing fast. And yeah. uh, Rumpelstiltskin would be, I suppose, alchemy. Exactly. <laughs> uh, then we get back to the real world. Steam <laughs> engines, Model T, flight in general, spacesuits. So it, we're not even limited in a time frame here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Then the writing from pictures, we had, of course, the science lab. We also had uh, meteorite. That could be very destructive, I assume. <laughs> uh, message in a bottle. Mm. That's kind of a fun half romantic. Tides and moons. Tides. There's where it fits. Mm -hmm. Then your favorites, Tesla, mm -hmm. Einstein, and Telkus. Yep. Unit seven, inventive writing, obviously is going to be about invention or exploring mm -hmm. outdoors. Essays, we pull the Einstein stuff to make the first essay from the unit six, and then they get to research their own scientist. Yep. And then we finish with uh, stories about both George Washington Carver and Nathaniel Bowditch. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, you know, you see that it there's a great balance in here. And I, I remember when we were kind of sitting around mm -hmm. looking at the table of contents, like mm -hmm. we don't want it to be a science, science, science book. We right. want the imaginative and creative, but we want everything to connect generally. Yep. I think that was, I think... You know, the the genius of the team that yes. worked on this yep. really did accomplish that. Yeah, and we actually did not attribute this to any one author because it truly was a, a, a work of many people putting this together. One thing I will mention, because if these are now available, Wonders of Science, Writing Lessons, these are now available on our website. This is our newest theme-based book. This is the first theme-based book that we have published that does not have in the student book the vocabulary cards on cardstock. Instead, those are available as a PDF download. So you can print them on cardstock yourself. We put them on Quizlet. So families who have this book can just use the app to be sure. able to go through the vocabulary. So there is vocabulary. It's just the physical vocabulary cards are no longer bound into this book. So that's we think that will be helpful to the families that really didn't want to cut up those cards anyway. Yeah. And did you put in uh, literature suggestions as well? Oh, of well? course. Yep. Yeah. So those are in the appendix this pe time. People yeah. appreciate those literature suggestions. Yep. Well, thank you, Andrew. As I said, this was an episode that I was looking forward to talking about because I love talking about what it is we do here at IEW. We often say here, I do, you do, we do don't necessarily need to sell more stuff. What we really want is to help more people be effective in teaching writing. And so if the more we can do that, if Wonders of Science is a step 
on that pathway, then we're really happy to provide this to you teachers and parents, and at the end of the day, students who will then learn to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. You say that like you've said that a few times. I think I've said that a few times. (laughs) Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcasts. Here you can also find show notes and relevant links from today's broadcast. One last thing. Would you mind going to iTunes to rate and review our podcast? This really helps other smart, caring listeners like you find us. Thanks so much.